I am here to talk to you about half holes. Please don't turn me off. Please don't think, oh my gosh, I've heard so much about half holds. I am not interested. Yes, Alicia, I know that I need to do more. Yes, Alicia, I know that I don't do enough half holds and it's imperative to me getting to Grand Prix or even doing better in anything in terms of dressage. What else can you tell me? Is that you? Is that how you're feeling? <laughs> Guys, this for me is just so epic. When I understood what a half halt really was, the difference in my riding was insane. Half halt itself is the most ridiculous terminology in the world. I literally think who came up with the word half halt went, let's make this so confusing that nobody else ever succeeds in dressage and we stay on top. I can't think of any other motivation for anybody else, to, for anybody to call it half halt. I would love to know how it became half halt because it has nothing to do with half stopping your horse. Nothing at all. If you ask 30 people what the aid is for half halt, 30 people will give you 30 different answers. It's because nobody really knows except the top, top, top. So let me explain to you what half halt really is. First of all, let's take halt out of your brain. Let's take half out of your brain. Let's take often out of your brain. What a half halt really is, is a complete and utter rebalance of your entire horse. Not only is it a correction, a rebalance, it is a guide as well. Your job on your dressage horse is to be aware of and in control of where every part of his body is at any one moment. That is what a half halt is. Now you might say to me, really? Well now I'm even more scared. <laughs> that sounds way more complicated than what I thought it was. It's really not. All of you, even if you're a happy hacker just jumping into dressage now, you all have these skills you were just unaware of them. So what I want you to do is I want you to imagine yourself on a hack and you come across an icy bridge. The bridge is this wide, just wide enough for your horse to cross, but not safely. It is slippery, it's iced over, but you've got no choice, you have to go across it. You're not allowed, there's not even enough space for you to get off your horse. You can't get off, you've got to ride across it. Think about how you would control your horse's body as he crossed that icy thin bridge. You would be getting him to take tiny little tiny steps as for him to not to slip over. You would be very aware that he's staying for on the width of that bridge and not going too wide because otherwise he's gonna fall off the bridge. And you would very easily guide your horse across that bridge, controlling his entire body, head, neck, feet, weight even. Because you're well aware that if he starts to fall a little bit that way and he slips, he's gonna go over the bridge. So you are on utmost alert. You are aware of where every tiny little foot is going. You are aware not to look down at the feet like this because that's going to send your weight this way and make your horse go that way. You're going to be looking up. And if you do look down to look at the feet, it's going to be a bit like this. You're not going to be going like this. You're going to be very aware of your body. You're going to be taut. You're going to be tall. You're going to be upright. You're going to use your entire body to help the horse go more and more to the ceiling. My cameraman's nodding. This is good. <laughs> this must mean you guys are getting it there. Can you can imagine yourself doing that. Probably none of you have actually walked over an icy little bridge, but I would bet my house on the fact that you have done something similar. Walked, got them through a thin, a thin track with trees either side. Walked them through a thin gate. That, guys, that is a half halt. Yeah? Explode my head? Yeah? 
I'm pausing here because I want you to really think about that. That is a half halt. It has nothing to do with your hands, your seat, your legs, your vision, squeezing on and off. It has nothing to do with halt, nothing to do with forward and back. It's the balance of your entire horse's body. A constant rebalance, but it's not rebalance when it's already off the bridge. It's rebalancing of millimeters and not waiting till something's wrong, being aware of what this foot is doing as it's in the air. Is it out here in the air? Oh, yes it is. Let's get it back here so it lands in the right spot. It's a constant alignment. Think of a set of train tracks. Think whenever you ride your horse, you're trying to keep his feet directly on those train tracks and never anywhere else. If you think about the alignment of your horse, where his body and his feet are, you will naturally half halt every single step. You don't have to think to half halt. When you hear people say, half halt before the corner, half halt before the transition, they're not wrong, but they're also not right. They're telling you to do that because to be fair, you're doing sweet FA up to that. <laughs> so when they say do it in the corner, the reason why they're telling you to do it in the corner is because you're doing no communication up the long side. If you do it in the corner, it's a measurable thing. You remember that an arena has four corners. So you remember corner, do something. Also, it's on a bend line. So your horse is in a suppling exercise. So it's more likely to accept your all of a sudden instruction versus if you're on a straight line, it's gonna give you more resistance. When they ask you to do it before a transition, it's the same thing. You're doing sweet FA up there as a sack of potatoes potentially or as just a passenger. Oh, this is a lovely ride. I have a cup of tea <laughs> versus leading. So they're asking you to do a half halt before the transition because you're doing nothing as it is. Rephrase it. Let's do a rebalance. As a worst, that would be a fail. As an ideal, you're constantly guiding and rebalancing. And that is constantly what your job is as you ride your horse along. Are his feet on his train tracks, one behind the other? Is his head, neck and back all aligned? Is it one straight line? Or is it a little bit like this or a little bit like that? Even when you're on a bend, the backbone is still straight. It is just extended and flexed, extended on one side, flexed on the other. But it's not broken. It's not the back looks like this and the neck's over here. Your job as a dressage rider is just to keep your horse in balance. All four weight on all four feet, exactly the same. Hind legs and front legs in line with each other. Neck, head and neck in the middle, not over to one side. That's your job. If you ride every single movement with that in mind, i.e. you don't ride a, if you ride a shoulder in and you lose that alignment, you abort your shoulder in or you back off the angle until you can ride the shoulder in while keeping that alignment. That is a half halt. How exciting is that? Do you get that? Yeah? Again, I've got nods in the background. This is good. You're getting that? That is a half halt. And you all have those skills. You do. Another way to look at it is think of your horse, think of your arena and put poles out. You can even try this. Put a one and a half meter perimeter around your entire arena with poles and ride around the arena staying within those poles. If to do that, that is a half halt. It is simple as that. If you understand that your half halt is not an aid, your half halt is how you ride, you will never be accused of not doing enough half halts ever again. Your horse is never gonna be surprised that a movement is coming. A canter is coming, you know that the outside hind leg is the leading leg. As you approach when giving that aid, you will be going, is my horse balanced 
Does he have enough weight on that leg? No, better fix that before I strike. It's not something you need to remember. It becomes how you rise. So, off you go guys. Go forth and conquer. Half hold. Rebalance. <laughs> Bye.